In the following lecture, we're going to discuss uh, infrared spectroscopy. To give you some background of what infra infrared spectroscopy is, uh, remember that when you have bonds, uh, uh, every molecule has bonds. These bonds are not rigid. Uh, they're always vibrating due to bond stretching and contraction. So, so atoms, if they are bonded together by electrons, shared electrons, these atoms would be, would be vibrating around stretching and uh, compressing and contracting. Similarly, if you have a molecule and uh, it has a particular shape, uh, then the bonds would also be moving to and fro. They're not going to be very, very stationary. So there's going to be vibrations due to bond bending and vibrations due to stretching and contracting. Now, these bonds, when they stretch and contract or when they are vibrating, they need to gain energy for that. Uh, so for these vibrations, they need to gain energy and they gain energy from uh, infrared, infrared waves or, or electromagnetic waves. So different frequencies from the infrared radiations are absorbed by these bonds when they vibrate, uh, contract or uh, stretch. Now, according to E is equal to HF, energy is proportional to frequency. What that basically means is, that not all the bonds are going to be vibrating in exactly the same way. You have different bonds and different bonds are, would, would vibrate in different ways. So every bond would require a different amount of energy. And if they require a different amount of energy, so they're going to absorb different amounts of frequencies or different frequencies. So for example, I have this molecule over here. Uh, I have a C double bond O over here and two CH bonds over here. Now this C double bond O would be different. It would vibrate differently. It would it would have different energy requirements when it when it is vibrating. So different frequencies are going to be absorbed by this C double bond O. The CH bond would be absorbing different frequencies when it needs to vibrate or when it starts to vibrate. So these CH bonds, these two bonds are identical. They look exactly the same. So they're going to absorb one frequency. Let's call that uh, F1. So they're going to uh, absorb frequency F1 from the infrared spectrum. The serial mono is going to absorb a different frequency. Let's call that F2 from the electromagnetic spectrum. So this molecule over here would be absorbing frequencies from the infrared spectrum, two different frequencies. Although it has three bonds, but these two bonds are going to vibrate and absorb the same frequency when they are vibrating, whereas this C del bono is going to absorb a different amount of frequency. So here I have a, an infrared spectrum of a propane one all molecule, and this is the infrared spectrum that's given. First, I'm going to describe what the axes are. If you look at this axis, the y axis, uh, the x axis on this diagram, you would notice that this is uh, given as uh, is described as wave number. Now, what is wave number? Wave number is 1 over wavelength. So, it's uh, it's basically 1 over the wavelength of the wave in centimeters. So, it's basically, it's basically proportional to the frequency of the wave. So, you can think of these wave numbers as frequencies. So, different frequencies are being transmitted so this is this uh, y axis over here is transmittance what transmittance means is that how much uh, if if transmittance is 100% that means these frequencies are not absorbed by the molecule the molecule propen one all has different bonds these different bonds would be stretching they would be contracting they would be vibrating to and fro uh, and they would be absorbing different frequencies from the infrared spectrum so this is your entire infrared spectrum with many different frequencies 100% transmittance means uh, that uh, these waves or these frequencies are not absorbed. And if the transmittance falls to almost 0%, that means these frequencies over here, for example, over here, you would notice that there's an absorption. This would indicate absorption, that the molecule has absorbed these frequencies. So you can see there's an absorption at around 2900. There's an absorption around uh, 3300. There's another weak absorption at around uh, 1500 uh, wave number. So... Uh, you have to look at these absorptions. You, are, you need to ignore these, these waves and these frequencies are not being absorbed by the molecule. They are 100% transmitted, transmitted. You just need to focus on the frequencies that have been absorbed. So if you look at this propen one all molecule, you will notice that there are many different bonds and those bonds would be stretching and contracting and vibrating to and fro. 
So for example, this uh, OH bond might be stretching and contracting. So it would be absorbing frequencies from the infrared spectrum. So on this chart, uh, this uh, absorption over here is given as the energy absorbed due to the OH bond stretching or contracting. So if, if uh, frequency is absorbed by this bond, then it's these frequencies over here. Similarly, the CH bond might be uh, these carbon and hydrogen bonds. There are lots of carbon hydrogen bonds in this molecule. So they might be vibrating to and fro. Uh, this absorption over here is described as the energy absorbed due to the CH bonds bending. So bending, vibrating to and fro. This is the frequency or wave number that is going to be absorbed from the infrared spectrum if the CH bond absorbs energy. And also, uh, there's another absorption over here. This is described as the energy absorbed due to the CH bonds stretching. So the CH bonds might be stretching as well. They might be uh, moving, uh, contracting or stretching. So the energy needed uh, uh, for the bond, the energy that would be absorbed by the bond from the infrared spectrum, it's going to be around this wave number. It's going to be around 2900. The one thing about infrared spectrum is that it's actually very, very hard to actually get information from the infrared spectrum because it's going to be very confusing. Lots of absorptions that would be happening. There are lots of bonds. Lots of bonds would be absorbing many different frequencies for stretching, for contracting, for, vibration, for vibrating to and fro. So uh, the infrared spectrum usually is very, very confusing and you're not able to uh, extract a lot of information. It, would be, it is very hard to actually extract um, uh, a lot of information if an infrared spectrum is given to you. Now we're going to jump uh, straight to interpreting infrared spectrum. So if you're given a molecule like ethanoic acid and it has the following structure and have, uh, so you would notice that uh, this ethanoic acid molecule has many different bonds. You can see all these bonds would be vibrating, contracting, stretching, bending and uh, they would be absorbing energies from the infrared spectrum. So the first thing you need to analyze is how many bonds, how many different types of bonds do you have? So there's a carbon double bond uh, oxygen bond over here, so that's one. There's a carbon oxygen single bond over here, this bond over here, this bond would be vibrating or stretching or, uh, or uh, moving to and fro and would be absorbing different frequencies. You have oxygen hydrogen bonds, so this is over here, another bond that would be vibrating and absorbing frequencies. Then you have lots of uh, CH bonds, uh, CH3, uh, you would have three CH bonds. And you also have a carbon-carbon single bond. So between these two carbon atoms, there's a single bond. So all these bonds, they are going to be absorbing different frequencies. And uh, they would be absorbing frequencies from the infrared spectrum. So if they need more energy, a higher frequency would be absorbed for vibration. If they need lower energy for vibration, a lower frequency would be absorbed from the infrared spectrum. But the point is, many different frequencies are going to be absorbed for when these bonds uh, compress or stretch or compress. Now I'm going to open the data booklet where uh, the, the wave numbers for different bonds are given. So we have this molecule over here and these wave numbers are going to tell us which frequencies are going to be absorbed. So this is the absorption range. This is the appearance of the peak, whether the absorption is going to be strong or W means that the absorption is going to be weak. So uh, if you look at this molecule over here, uh, there's a C little bond O. This would be uh, moving to and fro, contracting, stretching twisting this bond would be absorbing energy and let's look at C double bond over here. Uh, uh, the C double bond O could be present in amides, it could be present in ketone aldehydes, it could be part of carboxylic acids which is our case. We were discussing ethanoic acids so it's, it could be part of carboxylic acids or the C double, bond, C double bond O could also be present in esters. So the frequency at which uh, this molecule, this bond is going to vibrate, it's going to be uh, around 1700 or 1750 wave numbers and it's going to be a very, very strong absorption. Similarly, there is an OH bond over here. So let's uh, find the OH bond. Let's uh, try and look for the OH bond. If you look at the OH bond, the OH bond absorption uh, range is given over here. This is the OH bond and we have an OH bond in carboxylic acid. So our OH bond is this OH bond specifically, the one that is in carboxylic acid and that has an absorption frequency around 2500 to 3000. So this is its absorption frequency and it's going to be, the appearance of the peak is going to be very strong. So it's going to be a very strong absorption and it's going to be very broad as well, which means that the, that the spectrum would have a lot of frequencies that would be absorbed. It's going to be a very broad uh, absorption. 
The other bonds uh, that are present in this molecule, you have a C single bond O. So, there is a C single bond over, over here uh, in alcohols or ethers or esters. Uh, carboxylic acid is missing, but let us uh, uh, take this C single bond O. It is going to have a strong absorption at around 1000 to 1300. So, there is going to be a strong absorption somewhere in this range. Then you have uh, C single bond C. So, let us uh, C single bond C is uh, let us find C single bond C. This C single bond C is uh, not given in our data booklet. Uh, let us move to the C and H bonds. So, there is carbon and hydrogen bonds. They are uh, their absorption is around 2800 to 3000. So, and they are going to be uh, it is going to be a strong absorption uh, because we have an alkane type, we have single bonds. So, it is going to be CH bonds are going to have a strong absorption within this range. Now, one thing that you would notice if you look at these values over here, you would notice that uh, these bonds, especially these bonds that are uh, absorbing these wave numbers, uh, these frequencies around 2500 to 3000 their frequencies are all jumbled up they are mixed up so it is actually very hard to figure out if you look at the inf infrared spectrum which we are going to do next it is going to be very hard to figure out which of these bonds are actually absorbing frequencies and vibrating or twisting uh, or contracting or stretching because their frequencies are all messed up uh, a few things a few bonds are very easily identifi identifiable one is the serial bond O. The serial bond O is always very easily identifiable because its wave numbers are very unique. Uh, they uh, absorb uh, wave numbers around 1600 to 1750. There is no other bond that is, uh, that is going to mix or come close to that range. So this serial bond O, always look out for the serial bond O. It is always uniquely identifiable in an infrared spectrum. Some other bonds that are very uniquely identifiable are these OH bonds, especially the OH bond in carboxylic acid because it has a strong and very broad absorption. So this bond, this OH bond, especially in carboxylic acid, is very easily identifiable. Now all the other bonds, uh, you have to do a lot of guesswork. So whenever you are given an infrared spectrum, always look out for either the serial bond O or the OH bond in carboxylic acid. Because the, all the other infrared absorptions are going to be very doubtful because their frequencies are all mixed up. Now here is my infrared spectrum for ethanoic acid. And just as I said that a few bonds, uh, their infrared spectrum is uniquely identifiable. One is the strong absorption at 1600 to 1700 range uh, wave number. Uh, it's always going to be serial bond O. It's, uh, its frequency would be, its absorption frequency would be very unique. And the other one is this very broad absorption uh, around the 3000 2500 range a very broad absorption because of the OH bond in carboxylic acid. These two bonds uh, and their infrared spectrum would be very uniquely identifiable. So just quickly referring uh, to the table again around 1600 1700 strong absorption because of C double bond O the appearance of the peak is going to be very strong. And the carboxylic acid, strong and very broad absorption, it's always the OH bond in carboxylic acid. Uh, there were other bonds in ethanoic acid. One was C single bond O around uh, 1300 to 1000. That would also give a strong absorption. So let's uh, look at our infrared spectrum once again. And you would notice that uh, there is a strong absorption around 1300. But uh, remember, all the other absorption frequencies uh, are going to, things are going to get very confusing because lots of bonds would be, uh, would be absorbing frequencies within that range. So you would not be sure, which is why I've put a question mark over here. You're not going to be sure whether this absorption is because of C single bond O or not. But for uh, C double bond O and the OH in carboxylic acid, you can be pretty sure that these peaks, uh, these absorption peaks are because of C double bond O and this is because the OH in carboxylic acid because that's the only one that is going to give you a very broad absorption peak. So my advice whenever you are solving a question of infrared spectroscopy, always look out for these bonds, C double bond O and this OH from carboxylic acid because all the other absorptions they are very hard to decipher. Every other absorption is going to be difficult to decipher. If you look at the table, uh, there would be lots of things absorbing frequencies around the 2000 to 3000 range. A lot of frequencies would be absorbed. So you would not be sure which of these bonds 
are the ones that are actually absorbing those uh, infrared frequencies. But if the peak is very broad, that would indicate that it's OH from carboxylic acid. Similarly, uh, uh, lots of bond uh, absorbing frequencies around uh, 1500 to 1000. It could be C single bond O or C double bond C. But C double bond O would be unique. It would, that's the only bond that uh, absorbs frequencies around the 1700, 1600 range. And it's going to be a strong absorption. So this frequency, this frequency absorption is going to be very, very unique. So always, always uh, try and look out for uh, this bond and this OH bond. For the others, it would just be guesswork and you would not be sure whether those absorptions are because of, uh, of any of the falling bonds.